Hi, this is Pastor Bob, and welcome to Pastor Bob Daily, sitting once again at Starbucks. You know, the last three times you've got me here. And uh, it's about 6 o'clock in the morning. There's a storm moving in here, and a uh, nice breeze blowing. It gets really hot here in Nashville, and I don't do very well in the heat. So I like to come here early and just sit outside and get a little outdoors time before it gets hot. It looks like I'm going to get more than just outdoors time today. We're going to have a storm here today. So, Joshua on Facebook had a really great question. He asked about youth groups, and he said, why is it when youth groups are so excited and they're so connected, and then they move away from home when they, when they finish school and they drop out of church and they lose their faith? What happens? And that's an excellent question, and I would love to talk about it because it's kind of a pet peeve that I have as well. And I realize what I'm about to say is, is a little bit controversial. And, uh, well, what else is new? But I want you to really hear what I have to say. And, and youth pastors, you know I love you. You know I appreciate what you're doing. And, uh, and I'm not against your programs. I'm not against the church. I just think that we probably are not doing everything we can with our kids these days. I think we're... We're giving them many times fun and games, but we're not really preparing them for life. You know, we feel like we have to identify with the kids. We got to make it fun. We got to make it exciting. We got to we have to make it that way to bring them into the church. And and people fall in love with that. The kids fall in love with that. They're they're into the church. They're into the youth group. They're feeling great about everything. But did we really allow them to fall in love with Jesus Christ? And that's the big thing, isn't it? The wind is starting to come up. The storm is coming in. We'll keep going. So there's a few things. You know, we we give them the word, but we don't always give them the meat of the word. You know what I'm saying? We don't always give them the answers to some of the tougher questions. We don't let them ask the tougher questions about Scripture. And folks, the atheists and the people out there that that are anti-Christian will definitely give them some of those questions but we need to prepare them and they need to be able to ask the tougher questions and you need to be able to give them the answers and let me tell you if you don't have the answers to those tougher questions you need to think about your faith as well we're not in this just for the sake of being into something we're in this for the sake of loving Jesus Christ and being involved in our faith and being involved in something that we can believe in and something that's real the other thing I know this is going to push some buttons, but the other thing is ministry trips or, or you know, the kind of trips that we take into other countries where, um, where we uh, maybe help build a building or whatever it might be, missions trips. Um, you know, here in Nashville, we have a homeless ministry. I've been trying to get youth groups involved with us for seven years now, uh, and it hasn't happened. They'll come once or they'll come twice, but they just really don't come back. And I think we, we get them used to going to another country to minister to people, but we really don't get them used to ministering in their own hometown and learning what it really is to love people and to minister to them exactly where they're at. And so I don't think we really prepare them very well. I'm not saying mission trips are wrong, but I'm saying your first mission trip really ought to be in your own city. And they're usually not. Now, all summer long, we have kids that join us underneath the bridge, and they are uh, kids from other cities. <clears throat> other cities and other youth groups that are coming here to work with it, that also don't work in their own cities. So it's just a really nice way of saying, let's take a vacation and we'll call it missions. And they'll do a few missions while they're there. Do you understand the problem? So, folks, here's the bottom line. People are leaving because there are reasons to leave, and we need to give them reasons to stay. The only reason there is to stay is if we give them a connection with the God who made them. So are you connecting them with Jesus Christ, or are you just connecting them with the church? Have you given them a personal faith that will keep them throughout their lives, or have you given them something that's temporary that, that will come and go? Some tough questions, but some important ones. I hope that helps. I hope that answers the question. God bless you. Have a great day.